featured here contains historical events that some may find disturbing. It is not recommended for children or the faint of heart. Alright, so The War episode, of the Roses was yeah, a battle between history for the, you and it is a civil war battle in the United Kingdom uh, England so it's going to be between the Lancastrians here. and uh, the Yorks has been reoccur York reoccurring I've been being seeing, not just uh, a shopping yeah, yeah, mall this, in the town of the that I've once called home that has some sort of spirit technically still call home now I don't know it, it's uncertain that involves something about bad omens but also a like section so, of England uh, looking into that it's gonna be what we're doing I go in into this episode, episode with the and it's gonna be great to have discernment between company why it's called the war of the roses very long who was fighting in the war of the roses that I would who love to won research that the war of the roses who lost research and that is Who started the War of the Roses. So I'm going to be what kind streaming of female you guys trickery here was involved by researching this live. It's not being broadcasted live, and but I'm wouldn't be right unless I said that, that also really I'm identifying my own so masculine inferiority complex have all involved, that extra, and that I have a stupid dumb man brain with stupid dumb man things being done as a stupid dumb man. Has Shoutouts to all the other stupid, dumb men that know this. So I hope you guys enjoy, and let's go. Another episode of, of history for you guys, uh, presented to you, presented to you from the Vault of Doom podcast. Um, I was really glad to fr freaking have all my ducks in a row on this one and have some pretty cool stuff situated and arranged. And you know, my grandmother's name was actually Rose. So doing an episode on the War of the Roses and then having all these photographs of, uh, of, of all the, the rose themed stuff as I'm even wearing rose desi designs of roses on my on my undergarments I suppose it wouldn't be perhaps uh, totally complete unless of course I added a, a, a picture of my wonderful deceased grandmother may she may her soul rest in peace uh, so I would love to freaking absolutely dedicate this episode to her and I'm really glad to have uh, be able to find an artist with that word in her name as well, uh, featuring her, uh, at least the link to her art on the show notes. I, I'm not necessarily going to really reach out so much as to try to actually feature some of the art on there and go through all the confusing complications therein, but... Um, opening up this episode with the song that inspired uh, with the song that inspired actually no I, I didn't really open this episode with anything this is just an episode like literally getting straight to the point I guess or something and uh, yeah so you know, maybe it would be a good time to even maybe close off with the song uh, Red is the Rose. I mean, that sounds like a totally great idea to me. In fact, I was actually uh, able to perform that live and put that and feature that song in my movie, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe I'll, I'll add both in and see how I do right now and then add them both in and just have them both on there. So here we go.
that in yonder garden grows Fair is the lily of the valley Clear is the water that flows from the boyne But my love is fairer than any T'was not for the parting that my sister gave, T'was not for the grief of my mother, T'was all for the love of my bonny Irish lass. But my heart is breaking forever, Red is the rose that in yonder garden grows. Fair is the lily of the valley. Clear is the water that flows from the boyne. But my love is fairer. So the, yeah, the distinguishing there, we'll get to the topic here. I just want to talk about the followers and the support that I'm getting. That, um, it's not much. It's very small. I'm not getting very much support at all right now. And the only thing, this is very important for me to say, that the only thing that actually helps me right now is that I have people that are made aware of what I'm making that like what I'm making and that support it in some way if it's a comment, a like, a follow, a share uh, making sure that they're being notified letting me know in the comments where me being uh, a traveler and somebody who's traveled the country from shore to shore from the Canadian border, and I've been to Canada before, all the way down to the Mexican border, but I have not been to Mexico, though I did have 
every plan and intention on doing so. I did not make it to Mexico ever. Would have been cool. Would have been a really cool story. That would have been a really cool story. You know, me making it on down over to Mexico. Whoa. Something. Let's go to Mexico. And then maybe like never making it back or something. Like a horror movie or something like that. But uh, I'm having a... To my chagrin, movies are... Uh, a complete total fucking waste of time and I think I might be better off spending the rest of my days never spending one single moment even made aware I need to like tell the creator of the universe like me the creator of my universe to tell all movies to get out of my sight Uh, but nonetheless, that's that. The chat's fucking, uh, the chat's gonna be, the chat's actually gonna be accessible during this chat. Uh, and not only that, um, the chat will be accessible, the chat will be accessible during the stream, I mean. The, uh, the chat is accessible during this stream, and this, this video, this stream... This is going to be on YouTube stored forever. Even though some terminology is missing for uh, what, you know, what users get 60 days of, of video storage. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't think that there's much more that can be said about that. I'd rather get on topic. So this, like I said is the Wars of the Roses and having that clear distinction and distinguishing between the singular and the plural is huge but this guy is looking uh, not like he's in battle this is he's he's looking like uh, very distraught you know it's very easy to make fun of old paintings and stuff and and I should I should have that kind of thing but my sense of humor is more than healthy. I have a very healthy sense of humor. And uh, so I'd rather just kind of like be made aware of everything that would be uh, something I would make a joke about. But I'd rather, uh, you know, focus on the history. Focus on, on the research. Uh, I've spent enough time talking about my following. The support that I need. The support that I get. Let's talk about history look at this guy's mace ironclad warrior wielding a mace I, I've got to admit the, I'm not feeling too well today feels very much like the life has been sucked out of me prior to this stream and uh, now it's just it's just you know wasting the entire fucking moment talking about my following and all that stuff that I need to do I very much need to do this. Shout out paid. I very much need to do this. And, and, you know, I don't mind at all. Not a big deal. I don't mind. As well as shouting out everybody that likes the stuff on X. But here we go. And here it is. And let's start with the families here at the table of con the, what I can see in the table of contents before I get into the actual facts of the wars that it looks like the, the families of Henry the, fa the, the war wars of the roses is between the white roses of the Lancastrians and the red roses of the Yorks. But, if I am mistaken, not a big deal at all. No trouble at all, and not a big deal at all. Because um, uh, we're still on the table of contents.
So, with these families, Richard of York, Henry of Lancaster, the madness of King Henry, what I also gathered from my last uh, stint at trying to record these, the string of episodes that I mentioned earlier, I had some technical difficulties earlier, where it took me the tenth time that the video was able to be recorded that that was where I still uh, yeah, even after that even 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 more than 10 times because even before that the even before that the 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 this episode was was the one that was supposed to be recorded the one that i'm referring to the one that took me the one that took me 10 tries the one that was recorded that was that that's a different episode different topic uh and again these are both uh history podcasts so this one's just about this historical event the other one is a historical event but it's so much more recent that i'm relieved to know i can just return back to it again and get the accurate basic conclusion Um, As it's lacking in all the news sources that I found. In all the news sources that I was looking for, there was no conclusion. There was no conclusive result. It was just, you know, your usual whatever. It it was just your your usual taking taking some kind of uh, personal account of people involved. And it's, it's... sucks that it's so confusing that I, I, I still wasn't even sure what the cause of it was but you know it, it so now that has dragged itself dragged it that confusion has now dragged its way into this episode or at least I, I, I I'm I'm craving that it does considering that this the confusion is lacking so badly in this episode that now I'm just craving confusion. It's it's uh, one of those things where, you know, anybody that works for betterhelp.com or anybody that's a psychologist or psychoanalyst, you know, you're you're going to be somebody that's preventing basically you you're going to be somebody that's preventing me from being successful here. And I have nothing but hatred towards you. So that's hate speech. I'm allowed to do that. And I can do that. And at least right now, I'm, I'm certainly able to do as much hate speech as I want, considering I'm totally an anonymous person right now with no presence. As much content as I'm making, as much time as I'm putting into this, I have no identity on here, no online presence. And so once again, returning back to the original topics of supporting and making aware what I'm doing, um, it's quite helpful that I never watch any of my own stuff. It's quite helpful indeed, because if I do watch something, basically anything that I actually do that maybe I'm not supposed to do or something like that in terms of reaching success in doing this is pretty pretty inquisitive of a of a endeavor and not really much of it it, it lacks completely lacks all authenticity so uh with that kind of cleared up um Wow, I, I think I might be ready to read some history now. But just in case, let me take a little bit longer, just in case.
And by take a little bit longer, I don't mean just like sit here wasting time. I mean I'm gonna get, I'm actually gonna get, uh, gonna go get some water. So we can take a look at, we can just stare at the table of contents again for a little bit longer. And before that, uh, I want to get into a little bit setting up the, like, what's up with this episode and what's up with the topic. So, it's, uh, it, it is cool that it's plural, Wars of the Roses. Um, especially considering that when I'm seeing this the first time, earlier before the huge, huge technical difficulties that I had, um, I, I'm thinking that that might be kind of like, uh inaccessible of a word to use in this context being that war maybe it would be like it should be shouldn't it be battles of the roses you know that's something I would say I would say something like that battles of the roses would be more of an adequate fitting and proper term possibly maybe I don't know whether that's true or not, uh, irregardless, it's the Wars of the Roses. And that's cool to be uh, watching me and in the know. I, I can't sit here and say it's cool to be me and me be me in the know. I can say if you're watching this and you're in the know and now you know that how to properly to properly call this how to properly word this, uh, what is the proper name of this, then, then, uh, then that's cool, then that's cool, but just me, and in the know, and just me, uh, I don't know, anyhow, we have an episode to do, and thankfully, uh, with the episode that's available on YouTube being 15 full minutes. That means it's the minute after 15 minutes. Uh, And then a few more minutes of babbling prior to that, prior to the actual recording occurred. Uh, It's great. That's good. Uh, For me to have that kind of commentary, you know. So let's let's run through the table of contents, and I'm gonna get some water. Henry the Sixth, Richard the York, the Madness of Henry, King Henry the Sixth, Saint Albans, the Battle of Blore Health Heath, the Battle of Blore Heath, the Battles of Lud- Ludford Bridge and Northampton, the Battle of Wakefield, Battle of Toton, power changes hands again and again. Princes in the Tower, the Tudors, and Sources, of course, the bibliography. Being being right back, I'll leave you on the Be Right Back screen, maybe. Thank you. 
key. fucking repeat every time and then forget my catchphrases because of me battling it or you know put some conspiracy theory bullshit in there but the fact remains for sure that uh, you know people have businesses to run business to conduct and money to make and I'm no exception I as well have a business to run and money to make though this is a lot of fun though I'm enjoying the hell out of making these videos and making the music that I make and doing all this other stuff uh, it's still a business anyway Uh, you can make sure, for sure, that you have yourself a high quality fucking production here, uh, that's definitely gonna be just, uh, you know, like everybody else, that you don't have to join or anything like that. I mean, I, I would be more than interested to join some of these things if I like something or if I like some of the other channels and the content that they make, but uh, I, I'm, I'm slowly starting to see how this making of podcasts is changing how, if it's, in interviewing artists is affecting how I'm hearing music. My, I have a different ear now that I did before, and that, and that goes for podcasts. So, other streamers, other podcasts, you know, as many different kinds of ways as I'd like to feel about that. Um, we do raiding here on this platform, so I need people to raid me, and I need to raid other people. And uh, that's really all it comes down to, you know, they're getting subscribers... And then there are those YouTube things you could join now for the money that it costs to join. And uh, what do they have that I don't have? Nothing. They have nothing at all that I don't have. These differences in technology is, is one thing. Um... Uh, the experience levels might or might not be there, but I'm way more experienced than most people doing this. First off. Uh, so that's out of there, you know. Um, and then any, any of the stuff that d just sounds like excuses, I don't have. I always say that I don't have an excuse. If something fucks up, if something goes wrong, and something fucks up, I don't not, I do not say anything else other than I don't have an excuse. So that I can get to the bottom of it, get to the truth of it, and as it turns out, usually, the way it usually turns out is, uh... There's just some bullshit going on here. Nothing good, folks. Nothing good. It's kind of like this war that we're going to read about. Kind of like this war that we're going to read about. Nothing good, folks. Nothing good. Oh, my charger is charging rapidly. I'm getting a rapid charge today. Oh, oh, such a rapid charge that I'm getting. The thing's been slow charging the last couple of days.
The Wars of the Roses. So, let me give you a quick history on this history. So, I wrote a song about this after reading an article that was printed and then making the huge leap from from there to here where we are right now into uh, a real fuck all of an episode honestly you know I don't think I'm going to do very well with this uh, but I'd like to so let's establish that that I wrote a song about this the last episode that I did of history I wrote a song about that I'm a musician see that's what happens when you're a musician is you write songs about stuff so not only now am I writing songs about stuff now I'm making podcasts where I have to talk about that I wrote songs about these things it must be some kind of mixture or combination in here with a lot of these youngsters that just have AI everything nowadays that they don't have any authenticity at all that uh, you know there's there's uh, what, what kind of fortification am I possibly going to be needing against that I don't know I think what I rather would do is coagulate and immerse myself into knowing as much as possible and in, in, in with no inconvenience to me about what the hell is going on with these youngsters and AI everything you know and everything's fake But you know, I, I I've already know, I've already know learned enough about that, so I, I guess this is a quite literal purgatory stage as I'm looking at one viewer. That's me. I am the one viewer, and then uh, just a literal purgatory I'm looking at over here. Just everything checks out completely, and everything's fucking failing miserably. Unreal. Unfucking real. You know, is there something else I would rather be doing than this? Well, I mentioned in a lot of the footage that was deleted in the last episode that, uh, well, I would have been at an open mic if I wasn't doing this. Playing some music. The last time I was was at that open mic, I was, I was actually removed from the property. And then the time before that I was actually reciting poetry so you know oftentimes I seem to seemingly forget I'm a musician and the reason being is this that this horrendous this horrendous thing that is uh literal the literal the apocalypse the literal end times where we are right now uh and everything being fake as hell you know that's that's just me this is just me blabbing and so fuck whatever I was blabbing about literally just fuck whatever I was blabbing about let's get to the fucking story here let's get to the fucking thing Wars of the Roses uh, I think it's so I think it's Lancaster and York uh, Lancaster I think is red Roses, uh, and then um, York is white roses, I think. And anyway, what I did gather from the last episode is York started it, and then they got power hungry, and then they succeeded until leaving pockets of rebellion. From the Lancasters. Must have. Done something. Must have done something. Must have done something. That leads me to think like. That leads me to think like, um,
You know, again, to ha fucking hell what I was thinking. I'm reading this shit right now. So here's what the fuck is on the top. The Wars of the Roses were a series of bloody civil wars for the throne of England between two competing royal families. Uh, so that's a civil war. Alright, it's like, uh, I know what civil war is. Uh, I know what royal families are. Uh, you know, this is uh, clearly... Uh, you, there's just uh, everything pointing so vehemently towards things that I'm going through a fucking war, my own little war of the roses over here. I'm going through my own little civil war over here that just uh, uh, leaves me as the as the victor every time. I I I I reign supreme. I. And the victor. I reign victorious through this shit every single time. Not through wit, not through cunning. You know, that's where I want to get to. That's where I want to get to. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to see. That's what the fuck is going on. That's what I know I'm not going to see. That's what I know I'm not going to hear ahead of time. Uh, once again, um, looking at these words is not going to be helpful to me. Uh, pulling out of these words something that I can say on here, just in case you need another podcasting 101, or just in case you need more uh, teacher, I'm teaching you and teaching, teaching, I'm a good teacher and this and that, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and continue on with that, um, you know, it's pretty fucked up, it's pretty fucked up that, uh, th this is how I'm gonna have to do this, this is how I'm gonna have to run this podcast, take every single thing that I'm feeling and pour it directly into whatever the fuck is into this article, that's what I'm gonna have to do. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. That's going to make sure that I have a successful episode. And that's going to make sure that whoever's emotions I'm siphoning leave them completely drained and empty, just like the lyrics of a Cradle of Filth song. Uh, and that's going to make sure that uh, everybody but me is completely he uh, held accountable for like a complete total failure of something that is just like literally no excuse for it there's, there's no excuse I don't have an excuse therefore nobody else has any excuse you know what about the political systems put in place to allow for me to run a successful podcast I don't think that exists I don't see anywhere on the constitution where it says that uh, on the 17th amendment or the, the 158th amendment of fantasy bullshit that says that I can run a successful podcast and uh, have people discover my music without problems and not be mentally fucking disturbed uh, as fuck from so many different fucking uh, like whatever things and shit but that's where I can get into a little bit of, well, it turns out, you know, I'm actually interested in everything. So, small wonder why I have suspicions that the Hollywood industry would have intentions on kidnapping me and sabotaging my life. Small wonder why I would ever give a flying fuck about any of that at all. Small wonder why this whole thing is coming to a close. And I sure do hope that this fucking show that I run and my music that I do and the creative inspiration that fuels it uh, remains afterwards. As well as other people that are vaguely involved with me. That's about it. That's about it, guys. We got a whole fucking day ahead of us now. 
for me to finish belting out what content that I have queued up. Once that's done, uh, it's done. Now, I'm eating a blood orange, I think. I think I'm, I think it's actually a pomegranate. Hold on. Uh, so, so YouTube can get a sneak peek. YouTube can get a uh, exclusive peek at what I'm eating. Um, but that doesn't, and that doesn't get uploaded till later. But the tw here on the Twitch stream, uh, you don't get to see it, so you have to wait till later to see what what this is. A pomegranate, a grapefruit. It's a grapefruit. I literally don't know that this is a grapefruit until I'm on camera recording a fucking video of me eating a grapefruit. You know, I don't think that any fucking business and the world is going to turn down cash for such a fucking delightful hit the jackpot struck gold finding buried treasure uh, insert proverb here insert metaphors here uh, but it is a grapefruit I'm, I'm just being honest I don't know that that it's uh, that it's a grapefruit till I'm eating it on camera and telling people that's watching, people that don't say anything at all, and it's got these little tiny seeds in here, I honestly don't even like grapefruit, but I think, and I know, in fact I know, in fact I'm manifesting, in fact I'm manifesting that, that, uh, that I start liking grapefruit now when I never liked grapefruit ever in my entire life. Even though uh, the same thing happened with peas, it is not for sure that it will happen here. You know, does anybody have have, have any any ability to discuss certain things that they're not they're not that they're not able to discuss right now? Because that would be, you know, a great excuse well, that'd be a completely viable excuse that I would totally accept tip my hat off to bow my head clasp my hands offer alms to you for allowing me to have some time to myself and some peace and quiet uh, and ex it, it is uh, for the reason of uh, being able to say things that nobody else is technically allowed to say under these circumstances or under this context Anyway, I literally have not even started this thing yet. I'm too busy eating the grapefruit. I get distracted too easily. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so look, Henry the Sixth was a You know what? I'm going to have to be right back again.
my back these uh these 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 main players in this war are like with or without uh my commentary or how I feel about it or what I know from history that I've learned either in school or through watching the uh, through watching the uh, videos or television uh, as this is pulled from a news source that belongs to a television network I'm gonna let that soak in Oh, silly me, I haven't introduced myself, and I'm not going to either. You know, as much time as it takes to do a proper introduction, I'm Mickey Gemini, this is the Vault of Doom Podcast. I'll leave the Twitch running and then do another segment here for YouTube. All right, now this is where we are right now. That these skirmishes, this madness, of King Henry the Sixth, his victory over the battle over Edward of Lancaster, due to Queen Margaret being angry. Uh, and then him him recovering him recovering from his spell of insanity almost as suddenly as he yield, yielded to it were his exact words and uh, Somerset being the person conquered here St. Albans, the Battle of Blore Heath and the Battles of Ludford Bridge in Northampton is looking like it's all in very brief you know, anybody, let me go through this real quick too, that the, it's a, it's always a, it's always a discernment that I, I like to bring to the table. Or the futility therein. But, St. Albans has a paragraph that's not even a whole paragraph. It's just one long run, two, two long run-on sentences, and then another two sentences. So it's a full one paragraph of Saint Albans. Uh, there's two things that I want to say about that. First of all, I'm still dreading it, even though it's really short. Second, three, three things actually. Two, I won't be able to retain it anyway. And three. Basically, I want to illustrate to you what I can remember uh, about my mind, you know? Am I an insane man? Do I have my sanity? 
Is my mental stability completely through the roof? Au contraire. Most people uh, are very quick to hit that button. Very, very quick to just push that button. Uh, leaving lots of demons to run, run havoc and ravage the earth. So... Looking at one paragraph for a whole battle is, dis is disconcerting, is disheart disheartening. You want to, you know, I'm not going to explain quantum mechanics and the, and the mechanics of the way that the, the human mind works over here, as I am not only not qualified for that, not only not getting paid for that, not only not getting paid for this to begin with, because it's totally free not only realizing that I am choosing certain things to say and some of those things that I'm choosing to say are uh, gonna need to be defined as something at some point in time and I'd rather that the definition come uh, in, a, in a very organic way and an accurate way and uh, not some kind of spiteful de definitions over here. So then with these uh, being like I just caught myself trying to explain the, the fucking um, mechanics of the human mind over here like I'm some kind of psychologist major or some shit you know be that as it may that I'm not uh, I'm still interested in shit so with this being my playground that's what I want to fucking do. Alright? The mind wants to look for more information when it sees something like this. Uh, in fact, I was on a forum for my recording software and the guy literally is just saying we'll need some more information like who is we what is he saying we'll need some more information for and it you know it, it, it has it has become a battle now you have introduced yourself into a war zone now as uh, the details for that being that uh, let me get into the details about the war zone immediately after telling you that we're in a war zone if I'm gonna conquer and succeed over the war or I mean sorry if I haven't already conquered and succeeded over the war you know there's there's doing there's multitasking there's doing multiple things at the same time and then there's like uh, trying to fight multiple wars at the same time but doing all of this and cramming all of this into one fucking wars of the roses episode is where I am right now where uh, the wars of the roses uh, is plural so it's let's be totally fucking clear about that that it's plural and this is taking place in 1400s 
So, Neville, Neville or Warwick, Richard of York, and then the Lancastrians. Henry the Sixth lost his mind and recovered immediately. He imprisoned the. He wasn't an Earl of of France. Uh, but there's a uh, the king of France was imprisoned Battle Blorheath has just as concise uh, an, an amount of information as St. Albans as Richard maintained a shaky hold on England, Margaret worked behind the scenes to restore Henry to the throne and uphold her son's place as his rightful heir. Salisbury Army met Margaret's large and well-equipped army, commanded by Lord Audley at Bloor Heath, on September 23rd, 1459, in Staffordshire, though outnumbered two to one, the Yorks soundly defeated the Lancastrians. So this is where the Lancastrians were defeated, and then afterwards, Richard fled to Ireland. Richard's alley Warwick let enter London with thousands of men. As they advanced on Henry's army in Northampton, victory seemed unlikely. One of his Lancastrian commanders was a turncoat and allowed Warwick's men to access Henry's camp. The Yorks easily won the battle and captured King Henry. Margaret fled once again. Queen Margaret fled fearing for her son Henry's life. There was an agreement passed by the English Parliament called the Act of Accord, and the ambitious Queen Margaret, however, would have none of this compromise and raised another army to rise against the Yorks. Richard set out with his forces to defeat Margaret's army and settle the matter of succession once and for all. The armies clashed at Wakefield Green near Sandal Castle but things didn't work out as Richard had planned. He was killed. His severed head was put on display wearing a paper crown. But is this real? Did the guy actually wear a fucking paper hat? <laughs> That's crazy dude. Holy shit. Well, let's look at the Battle of Toton now, because this looks like it just went on and on between the Yorks and Lancastrians, and Lancastrians, you know, English, Yorks, English. It's a civil war. <coughs> Excuse my absolutely disgusting manners. I'm, I'm, it's not up for debate. I'm demanding and commanding that you excuse my disgusting manners. As though I would like to hang on to my disgusting manners for some reason. It's believed over 50,000 men engaged in brutal fighting around 28 thousand of them died and the battle of Toten was the bloodiest one day battle in England's history the Yorks emerged victorious and Henry Margaret and their son fled to Scotland leaving Edward 
king of England. Power changes hands again and again. Edward this is the fourth. Now I could do something that I might do and talk about it, but something I'm not going to do. Uh, but he underestimated the disposed or deposed rather Queen Margaret's stealth and ambition. Deposed Queen Margaret has stealth and ambition. Whoa. So she maintained her stealth and ambition through her de deposition. Deposition. With the help of her compatriots in France, she ousted Edward and restored her husband to the throne in October 1470. Edward went into hiding but wasn't idle. He mustered an army and won York victories at the Battle of Barnet and Battle of Tewkesbury. At Tewkesbury, Henry and Margaret's only son was killed and the royal couple were captured and held in the Tower of London. The, thro the throne of England reverted back to Edward. So these guys are imprisoning each other. They're killing each other. They're driving each other insane. They are uh, doing those things to each other. Uh, last but not least, the princes of the tower and the Tudors. I'm combining two different things. Uh, so, King Edward IV died in 1483 and was succeeded by his young son, Edward V. Richard III, the ambitious brother of Edward IV, became his new nephew, Edward's Lord Protector. But he plotted to have Edward V and his younger brother declared illegitimate. Well, uh, the power-hungry Richard succeeded in his plot and was crowned in July 1483. To eliminate any threats to his throne, Richard III had his young nephews held in the Tower of London, supposedly for their protection. When both boys, now famous as the princes in the Tower, vanished, and Richard was accused of ordering them murdered, the king quickly lost favor with his people. Uh, so the king, this looks like King Richard, that Richard was accused of ordering them murdered. When Richard uh, accused of, of, uh, when, when Richard accused the prisoners, no, when, when Richard accused, when Richard the third had his nephews held in the Tower of London, supposedly for their protection. Who are now famous for being the princes of the tower. When this happened and he was accused of ordering that they be murdered, his people gave up completely on him. Anyway, I've been waiting to do this fucking show for a month. So, it's crying shame that I have to limit it to History Channel. I probably won't probably won't limit it to just the history channel uh, I'll probably just you know shit on whatever other news sources that I find I'm leaving it at the history channel guys and whatever other else one and that way that this episode can be decent because uh, in the in the stuff that I already have prepped up I've been waiting to do this episode for a month and uh, what I have prepped up in 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 between that month, in between, a month is 30 days, and in between that 30 day time, not on the first day, not on the last day today, not directly in the center, somewhere random, somewhere random in between, somehow, somewhere, it's not for sure, I don't know for sure, no one knows for sure, it's a grand fucking miraculous mystery, uh, the, the episode is prepped. And it has other segments in. Basically what I am trying to say is I don't know 
how long this episode is going to be, and quite honestly, I don't care either. So, as Richard's right, last but not least, the Tudors. As Richard's right to the throne became tenuous, the Lancastrian Henry Tudor, with the help of France and many nobles, staked his claim to the crown. So France helped the Lancastrians. It looks like France was an ally. Uh, you know, what kind of... Uh, what kind of discrepancies that I can make here uh, are, are that are as such that can be, you know, that I can immediately identify? Uh, something like uh, it, it would be as such. So it, it, it is the question you might be asking. I know I'm asking, but you might be asking, and uh, it's as such, okay? Uh, war in and of itself is literally just holding a mirror up to you. So, for me to do that here is the, is the requirement at this point, obviously. It obviously must be some kind of fucking requirement or something like that. Is it getting me more followers? Is it getting me more likes? Is it generating income? Is it is anything like that? Probably not. Is there are there real brownie points and extra credits in this game? Probably. Do I even think that much at all? Fuck no. Absolutely fucking not. No. Uh, but the real question is what I would, you know, what, what discrepancies can I make about this war? And then that can be, that the discrepancy can be immediately identified, uh, or just go straight to the, the identification. Uh, well, the identification is it's, it's, it's really the, the, the state of civil war itself being that something larger is trying to evolve that the land itself is trying to evolve you can look at it from a spiritual perspective maybe and say something like that maybe you can look at it from a quantum mechanics a scientific uh you know, Scientologist, uh, something like that, you know, uh, perspective, perspective, and say that. But in my mind, that's the one, that's my personal civil war that you're witnessing right now. Uh, in my mind, that's the one supposedly dominating. And, you know, that's just how war works. One side wants to dominate. The other side says, oh, fuck no, you're not going to dominate me. And then they go at it. They go back and forth, and you have the, the larger versus the smaller. There's very ever seldom a war within balance. When there's balance, there is not war. I mean, that's literal ancient Chinese fucking secrets over there that I'm just, like, following the fucking rules by shitting out, wiping my fucking ass with, honestly. So if you're watching this and listening to this, you're witnessing something that, you know, I guess is just not supposed to exist. Technically, or something, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, with that kind of understanding, I can have now more fun with this. It's more fun. Like, uh, that's what it is. You know, Taoist. I have a Taoist discrepancy on this. So everything's ambiguous. Everything's whatever comes in. Everything's fucking totally ambiguous, man. Totally fucking ambiguous. No structure. No everything. No. 
Uh, that's immediately identified. So whatever is then that small frame of time afterwards is like why I'm tree beard. Tree beard. Lord of the Rings. I am not altogether on anyone's side, and therefore no one is altogether on my side. Or I am not altogether on anyone's side because no one is altogether on my side. No one cares for the woods anymore. Well, anyway. Uh, sometimes people have to recognize, acknowledge, identify, comment on, speak to me directly through this platform that I have provided you to speak to me on about what you think about this little epiphany, if you will. Uh, but before then, let me finish what I'm saying or what was said, and then what I'm saying after. The Tudors, as Richard's right to the throne became tenuous, Lancaster to the help of France, French was an ally, and many nobles staked his claim to the crown, and he met Richard on the battlefield of Bosworth on August 22nd, 1485. Hey, I think that's an uh, important date for uh, Richard, uh, that's an important date for Richard being met on the battlefield at Bosworth as well as an important date for me personally after fighting valiantly Richard III was killed legend has it his crown was placed on Henry's head at the very spot where Richard fell so that's a cool concept Henry's head <laughs> chopped it off uh Legend has it that the fucking crown was placed on his head. Richard's head was not cut off, sorry. Henry's head had the crown placed on it at the exact location that Richard III was killed. You know, these are things that any culture can relate to in terms of, you know, enticing someone for power. So, I've after his official coronation, Henry Elizabeth of York to reconcile the long feud in Lancaster, York House of the Universe Building gave rise to the Tudor dynasty. So this is what I provided. Some cool, interesting things for philosophers for free. And then I've provided some cool, interesting concept for other musicians for free. And, uh, well, I am a philosopher. Well, I am a podcaster. Well, I am a musician. So, in other words, when I'm not doing this, when I'm not on here, I have to get to me. I have to focus on me. I gotta do me, and I have to fucking make sure that I'm fucking getting the fucking everything that I need when I jump back on here, and when I'm gone, and all this other stuff. I need that. I need that. I need that. That's the War of the Roses History Channel fucking breakdown. Like I said, uh, I want to cut it off here, but I'm gonna make sure that I know that there's something else there. And also help me re-emphasize that it's plural. So Wikipedia, you know, am I gonna go? Let's 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 not let's not do the way that the way that I'm scared of doing it. Let's do it the way that it's done on this show. The way that I do it on this show. Uh, white roses were. So white roses were initially the War of the Roses centered on fighting for control of mentally ill Henry VI, but later became a struggle for the throne itself. The fighting ended in 1485 with the ascension of Henry VII to the throne and beginning of Tudor dynasty. What was the worst War of the Roses? The Battle of Toten. Biggest, bloodiest, longest battle. That's what you want to hear. That's what you want to see. The biggest, bloodiest, longest battle on English soil was fought at Toten in Yorkshire Palm Sunday, 1461. Its brutality was a consequence of deep geographical and cultural divisions which persist to this day. Who actually won the Royal of the Roses? Well, Henry the Tudor of the House of Lancaster. So, 
in, in closing and in conclusion, Lancaster won, York lost, and York started it, trying to expand the territory. And by expanding the territory, what it was that was said was that multiple territories were attempted to be taken down by York. Richard was York. Uh, and I guess, I guess Henry. Yeah, I guess Henry... Henry the Sixth was Lancaster. Yeah. Henry the Sixth was Lancaster. Anyway, what the, the the only other thing to cap off what I can remember here is the white roses were Lancaster because that's what I think. No, the white were the Yorks. The white were the Yorks and the red were the Lancasters. So if you look at this image here, that will pull up. With the words next to it, it'd be cool that these uh, Lancaster roses are red, York roses are white, and this this is where we want to know: was this the images on their flags? Why is this called this? You know, people can make all kinds of cool AI stuff. I can forget the information uh, I can forget the information that I'm retaining as many times as I want just like I had to delete as many times as I fucking had to this goddamn shit uh, it's so bad I, I can even forget that I know that So asking Google questions is the quickest way to get those third parties on your ass, probably. <laughs> Cut that shit off right now. You know, directly asking the question to Google. It means you don't have the time to spend to fucking either go back to where you came or find a new one. So, I'd go find a new one, but we I'm old enough to know things like, uh, no. So, this is where we were, and then also, no. It's not going to tell me. So, back again. Well, uh, the family tree image is on the Britannica. I've already been through Britannica as well. So it looks like now I'm going to be doing some actual discoveries. Now I'm going to be doing some actual research. Now I'm going to be actually really looking into it. I, I think the roses were on the flag. So Wars of the Roses roses on the flag you know that's just a little personal thing here but it's probably more better to just be like uh, you know mindful of the part of me that's like uh, whatever and all this other shit the white roses of the York and the roses were a series of civil wars uh, between the house of the York and the two branches of the royal family the wars from the heraldic badges heraldic badges the British Isles have things called family crests. They also have things called, uh, evidently, heretic badges. Never heard of heretic badges. But family crest, heretic badge, they look the same. They look the same. They look like the same thing. But with this photograph being York and its allies, we have all this white rose 
imagery that is literally not present at all. There's not one single white rose. Oh no, there it is. Right on the very top. Right at the very tippy top, you have white roses. On the long tapering flags air the long tapering flags the standards used as mustering and rallying points in battle the rectangular flags are personal banners Duke of York Fitzalan Norfolk England Neville you know, th this is like, uh, okay, whenever you're done doing that, you know, uh, just go ahead and come see me. But this is available on eBay. You can go buy that, you know, whenever you're done doing that, too. Uh, anyway, I just released an album today. I want to make sure I set it for a second time, as there were actually two albums, so go check those out. Well, we got the York Roses and not the Lancasters, so let me see more. Uh, you know, this is Wikipedia that we're on now, and this is full of information. So, what you have here at this point for me uh, is just like literally, like, don't forget that information is a rabbit hole. You know, it's like I'm not gonna be able. You can't. You can't ever really retain anything unless you write it down. Here we go. It's the badge that contains the imagery of the rose. Um, you ready? When you're ready to hear my input about it, let me know. Because uh, I'll probably say something like, uh, Hey, uh, won't be able to for a little while, so I'm signing out basically for now. And they, uh, and the, um, uh, And the, uh, the episode is going to have two different ones, one on YouTube and then the one on here on Twitch. I'm interested to see how the one turns out on Twitch. Just like I'm interested to see how my album fucking turned out. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do right now. I think I'm going to go ahead and allow for a whole giant gap of space filled with absolutely nothing in it whatsoever. Between closing off this episode and then listening to my album and then you know does anybody really think that that's what I want to fucking sit here and do you know there's a lot of stuff that you don't talk about there's a lot of stuff that you do talk about anyway this episode signed out Clearly, I'm on a little bit of a plateau 
where every single bit of the the information that I provide here doesn't really have much uh, wingspan. It's not spreading its wings and flying. But you know what is spreading its wings and flying is the magpie as a bird. And another thing that's also flying free as a bird is the magpie as a witch symbol in witchcraft. And let's go through this segment of the show. I'm adding this in as it's an English connotation. And I'm actually going to have to jump to that. Because we have symbolism right here. So magpies can represent different things depending on the culture and the situation. Link available there if you need it. Luck. Tricksters. Dual nature. Protection. Adventure. Bridges. Gathering. Superstitions. Saluting. You pick one. All the links are available on there. You can pick one and then go run with that. Maybe I'm guiding people down rabbit holes right now. I don't know. That seems to be a fair assumption. This angle sucks, I'll tell you that, because I'm like laying down and you're just looking at my ugly mug. I know I'm ugly as fuck. I'm not going to say it from this angle. But from a different angle, like this one, I'm instantly more handsome. This one more accurate yeah this is good this is a good angle right here down here like this it's not good it's like just anything like it just looks lazy i'm absolutely in disgust of myself right now i'm absolutely disgusted with myself but you know why would i be disgusted with myself when i just literally flipped the script i don't know anyway Magpies are birds in the crow family, Corvidae, and are known for being intelligent, curious, and playful. They are also known for being protective of their young nest territories. The Eurasian magpie, Pika Pika, is a black and white bird with a long, glossy green tail and metallic blue wings. It is one of the most intelligent birds and is believed to be one of the most intelligent non-human animals. Look at these wings and their colors. And look at the possibility of them being near me. Is what I would want right here. Let me jump onto Google myself. Beat the fucking third party to it. And make sure that I provide a suggestion. About this result, share, send feedback. I'm going to share some feedback right here live on camera. So that you guys know. I'm not just sitting around here bitching and complaining. I'm actually doing something about it. I guess I'm an activist. What's your feedback about relevant content, new sexual behavior, whatever, product design, and functionality? Product design and functionality. I like this result on this feature. I don't like this result on this feature. This feature isn't working correctly. Other feedback. Put a section. Well, I just heard a really cool bird outside. It was almost probably just as good as the three hours of music that I just uploaded yesterday. Anyway, include a screen capture. Now nah, I'm good. Submit, close, and back to the show. Well, it looks like I can just exit out of my feedback and be right back. No, not quite. I have to press the motherfucking button a thousand times. I have to press the back button a few times, wondering in in anxiety whether it's going to fucking, you know, jump me out, and it did. And so now we're back 
we're back, we're back, you know, is there an echo in here, is this an echo chamber, am I being fucking in, in, in investigated by the FBI, well, it looks like I instantly got a response from the Gmail here, uh, while well, on my way to the Walmart and going the good old river and the good old pond and oh no never mind sorry I got a little a digression thank you for submitting feedback to magpie for magpie here's what you suggested for magpie thanks for telling me what I suggested I'm going to read it now again on camera here for you put a section on here that says something easier for people to read who are looking for where this animal can be found so that they can discover if that animal is available near them. Well, I feel all kinds of ways about it. Way too emotional to get into it, but I'm going to talk about it. Good thing that men don't talk about their emotions for centuries until they finally do talk about their emotions. Now I can flip the script twice in the same segment. That the motherfucking uh, part of me that feels like, oh, maybe I'm giving away some of the you know the valuable stuff that should be better left unsaid or something like that is being given to the machine or something like that um not here and let me explain why i can explain perfectly why because i am simply putting in there uh what it gets and i'm not putting in there what it doesn't get so let me go back in there it's a no reply email that I'm imagining I'm replying to literally I'm imagining that I'm applying to this no reply email right now where uh, after that second sentence first sentence second sentence third sentence would have had something like this Anything to do with fucking Satanism at all? I don't know. Probably not. Maybe not until I'm maybe finishing the episode or, you know, doing things under a specific context. Not here. Now, with this fucking, uh, you know, getting into, like, exacerbating the war or whatever song title you want to use because you're a mainstream artist or something or want to be famous or something like that or you know whatever I don't I don't have the ability to provide what I see on a thread when I see on threads not the app but the actual thread of any given platform I see interactions that are da 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 such and such thing and then another thing uh I said this I got this reply thank you now I can go to a Starbucks and buy a coffee and then say that too thank you But the insight that I'm looking for here is that, well, it looks like a part of me is expecting me something from me. And that thing that it's expecting from me is really, really getting into the fucking uh, bare bones of it that, uh, you know, I'm not saying something under uh, a certain amount of characters. There are, it has exceeded a certain amount of characters and therefore that would be limitations limiting myself lesson of the day very valuable I'm sure I'll remember it now back to the content even though I can't retain any of it I have literally no patience for it at all I'm gonna go through a couple other things too in fact I think I might even clean out my uh, I'm gonna clean out my just random things while I'm at it too but here we go. Um, it doesn't have that thing that I was asking it to have. But, you know, me making it user friendly, someone gets paid to do that. That's their job. And you know what else? They have to read what I'm saying for them to do their job. They don't have to, but I'm pretty sure they have to. If they don't have to read what people are saying in the feedback sections, 
they should have to read what the feedback feedback sections say unless of course you know I'm going to continue with the content which I am so here it is sounds lifespan diet representative species of predators it's it's just about the animal it's not about location of the animal location matters to humans probably doesn't matter to a free bird free as a bird now what did I say was free as a bird the bird is what I said was free as a bird that's right Okay, good thing I remembered that too, as well as the lesson. Alright, those are just the only two things, really. Uh, if you guys notice I'm being an extreme cunt today, it's just my monthly. I have, it, I have to be a cunt once a month and clean out the fucking drawers and, you know, jump into some ice cold water and bathe. As you can see, I'm living outside. So that's the information about the magpie, there's a bunch of symbolism that I wanted to get into because that's the specific stuff that I would get into. All the time that it's going to, and frustration that it's going to take and require me to get into is just something that I'll acknowledge and move on with. So saluting is one way to do it that's relative to something directly affecting me right now saluting the magpie and then when that act happens as I don't know yet if we have any here where I live so that's what I'm going to be looking into next but when that act occurs of me saluting the magpie it it will not only help me feel better it will not only feed my spiritual side it will be this defining moment right now where I'm saying this, explicitly saying it, that I am more a spiritual person. I am more a spiritual person, maybe more of a yogi, health nut, etc. I've said this to a few individuals and it just seems to me like uh can't say anything to anybody at all ever for any fucking reason whatsoever unless it's on camera now. You know, isn't that what happened to society? Dystopia? Isn't that how dystopia occurs? It just looks, from my perspective, honestly, really fucking ridiculous. Like, I'm, I'm just like, I, I am the camera. I'm like literally just watching it all go down. Like, I'm just watching the behaviors of people, the things they say to me. It's, it's, uh, I, I, I have to give them the guru look of like, dude, I know where you're getting at. I know what you're playing at. I'm not going to fucking waste time on you and then boom hit with this kind of shit where I have a whole string of shit a whole string of time that all I want to do is just forget about it and move on what I am not going to move on from is right here in the section of symbolism Tricksters, magpies are often persuaded as tricksters and thieves. Luck in some cultures, magpies are considered to be a sign of good luck, while in others they are seen as a bad omen. Anything looks like it's relative to me now. Anything. Gathering being a specific, specific goal, very important one to me that I can't talk about. So, how does that feel to me right now, knowing that I have the ability to say? that there are certain things that I can't talk about well that's another thing I'm not going to talk about how I feel about it so one of the cool things about uh, this show is a bunch of fucking a bunch of fucking footage gets lost a whole shitload of it gets lost in the creation of one episode of one segment hours of footage has been lost in the film Voyage that was released this February, just this year. And it does some damage on me, albeit beneficial damage. Kind of like 
bloodletting. It's it's a bloodletting type of podcast where I'm just squeezing everything out. I'm going through dealing with the frustrations of what happens and then whatever comes out is miraculous by nature. It doesn't have any actual value though. It's my show. It's become a symbol of a podcast now. It's no longer real. And fortunately enough, I'm at the crossroads of being able to deal with where everything went wrong. And most likely at this point forward, being able to move forward, actually move forward and still have, you know, things be working to my favor as that would be luck. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run down each and every one, how each and every one. I know each one of it's relevant to me right now, but I'm going to run through why each one is relevant to me right now. Luck, just mentioned that. Gathering, told you I couldn't talk about that. That's the only secret. Now it's not a secret anymore. It's a song I wrote while I was high on DMT. And not while I was high on DMT. That's hilarious. That's funny as hell. Not while I was high on DMT. While I was high on DMT, the message received was amounted to one song. That one song is no longer in existence. It has been lost through something or other of me living here right now. Something or other uh, has interrupted everything. There's, I'm going through some real serious shit that everyone's getting strung into the orbit of. And these, these drug-taking stories are going to be ready pretty soon. I'm thinking season 7 or season 8. But I need to get through this one and the next. And then maybe I'll be comfortable with it. But uh, the drug-taking stories are a necessity for sure. Um, it's, it's my life. These are mem- these are uh, not just memories, but realities. You know where where does this this new job for a cowboy album, and then their concept that I read about the the drug taking psychedelic drug taking experience uh, tie into me? Mine is is in the song Gather that was combined with the Morgan that was combined with an ancient Celtic war goddess is it great that I'm mentioning war goddess on an episode featuring the war of the roses wars of the roses I don't know yes I know the answer is yes and uh, maybe the the uh, the descriptions of the types of metal is probably probably pretty relevant. You know, considering that that's a folk metal song. Um, that's how the song hit me. So the content of the song is based on a DMT trip. The message received in a DMT. The message received in a DMT trip and needing to be so specific is not what frustrates me. It's it's something about me that seems to not know anything that's really frustrating. I don't know how I could possibly be having to be involved or doing dealings with so much of an ignorant side of myself. Then the fascination comes and grasps me and pulls me right back in and says, Oh, well, you don't know what part of you is ignorant? You better investigate, look into that. But that's a folk metal song. And those guys make death metal. It's it's actually metal core. For some reason I'm lumping it into metal core based on when I found them. Like me finding them at the same time as being into metal core makes me call them metal core. But they're not metal core. They're actually death metal. 
Now back to the, you know, once again, dancing around the content. It seems I'll never get to the content. So maybe you just don't like the content. If, you know, you don't like this thing. So tricksters, uh, dual nature, you know, now everything is, it, everything's still relevant to me. It's just I have less patience now to deal with that fact. Tricksters. Is, uh, everything's tricksters. Everybody's a trickster. Everybody's got tricksters. Dual nature. Everybody's dual nature. Everybody's got dual nature. Protection. Oh, there's a protection spell book that I shouldn't mention or talk about or maybe show you or maybe pause and show you the protection spell book right now. That's a grand, con- that's a grand masterpiece of content that I'm making there. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I might do that. I don't know. I might have no choice. I don't know. Adventure. Totally relevant to me. You know, let me talk. I, I Basically what I'm saying is I can't talk about details. So there's, you wouldn't want anything here. Bridges and superstitions. I give up. I'm, I'm leaving. You know, where was I? Who came here? Who showed up? Who waits for me to leave to show up there? Anyway, this is all cool information for you to check out and for you to jump on here with me and watch this as I'm sharing this with you. I'm sharing the Tolkien experience with you as I read those, most likely, through music. That should be explicitly stated right now. Anything in the, from the Tolkien universe that is consumed by me will be... It's, it's made, it's, the vow is being made on camera right now. I hereby solemnly swear that all Tolkien universe content that is consumed by me will be transcribed, transformed, and made into a creative orifice, creative outlet, creative channel through music. My music. My original music. And I hope that not only through me explicitly stating this, that not only will it be focused on that it's very important that I've said this ahead of time. That, that's all I can really worry about right now. I can't worry about anything else. But magpies are intelligent, just like uh, Hungarian dogs that I saw on a, a Hungarian dog show. You know, these are buzz moments. You know, buzz words. AI looking for buzz words like terrorism, that's one thing. AI trying to find whole moments of things that might be triggers for people with mental illness. That's like that's a gravy fucking train gravy fucking train I'm not gonna get into anything else afterwards I'm gonna get back to the content after this segment and the commercial break that has some music from me well now you didn't think I would just leave you high and dry now did you we have to find out where these birds can be found as it's an English symbolism and that's not in being stated in there unless I click on one of these links and so we got to look into that and uh, why reason why and, and then whatever whatever other random stuff is there and as a as a as as it says this okay I'm a wild this nine year old has a wild friend of the magpie <laughs> This kid says this that I did not mean to refer to. I don't want to be mistaken that you think that I'm referring to her as a... I was about six weeks old when we first saw her. She was on the ground, not moving. Look, now I'm getting all the information I need. And she squawked when I went up to her. She looked hungry, so I fed her mealworms soaked in water. After that, right. she then started to visit me at my house. Let her into our sunroom. We keep the door open so that she can always get out. But she really loves the sunroom and meditates on one leg for up to two hours. When she can what? fly, Pine she and I so close. She meditates on one leg. See, comedians need me to give them information. Is that what it is? 
I don't know, conspiracy theory? Tied together. Uh, uh, I always, you know, the the green, green, um, looks like green stuff. That is my flower press. We pick wildflowers when I got it. Super green. People. Empire loves to run away. Super green. Right. Super green. She loves to pick green up things, especially like green. She tears up the napkins. I think maybe she wants to make a nest. Yeah, 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 she wants Listening to what this little girl has to say she about the magpie. Really long distances across that farm. I know. And I should be sorry too, especially if I don't have a fucking Pyre. super green Pyre. fucking nutrition uh, supplement sponsor. Nor will Her I have. Her full name is Pyre. Have when that. I was little, I called magpies magpies Again. because my grandma has a strong Italian accent, and that's what that's she called them. Talk about that all day. I'm not going to talk about that. It takes two years to find out. She doesn't visit as much now that she's older. It's nice that she gets to live her own life. How long is this fucking video? Seriously. Well, that's the, that's the reaction. It's like uh, I'm a statistic now. I'm the guy that went she in two minutes and 53 seconds and then said, How much longer is this? But it's a gray, yeah, it's a gray and black one that she has as a pet. Wow. Okay. So some otherworldly stuff that this bird consists of is what we want to look into. Big news from my home. I'm switching to iPhone 16, but Timo, it's built for Apple intelligence. That's like peanut. That's really why I'm interested in the in this animal. That it's otherworldly, spiritual, mystical connotations, and you know those are the two answers that we'll arrive at before the end of this segment. Are the magpies in the U.S.? Someone asked. People also ask, what does it mean to be called a magpie? Why? Do magpies have a bad reputation? What is special about magpies? Well, we want to know if they're in the U.S. I don't want you knowing my location, but you know I'm in the U.S. Black-billed magpies are common in western North America and live in tall thickets along streams and among scattered trees in open country terrain, farm country, and some suburban areas. Western North America would be where if they migrated to here and this part of the Midwest of North America where I am right now then it wouldn't be too much of a long shot to think that there might be one here um, this is half based on the way that it looks and then just generally generally speaking that they might uh they might have the ability to migrate you know and jump out of their comfort zone i don't know but who who would uh who would possibly you know who else would po what i would like to know before arriving or while at the same time as arriving at uh you know the the spiritual connotations uh, because considering that those answers have already been arrived at that all that long list of superstition and stuff that we found here and the symbolism that's what I was looking for a common superstition is that seeing a magpie alone is bad luck there's also a rhyme that goes one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, ten for silver, six for gold, seven for secrets never told. That's the song by by the Unthanks. And that's why I'm mentioning the War of the Roses in combination with the Unthanks. As the War of the Roses was mentioned in Alan Averill's Agitators Anonymous podcast, I wrote a song about Wars of the Roses way long time ago 
when I had read an article about it. And then uh, the Magpie was requested on a local folk music station that has a Saturday night radio show. And then uh, something weird happened. And, you know, instead of acknowledging the weird stuff in any fucking way possible, uh, I'm acknowledging it in my way possible. Like, uh, uh, excuse me, but you have me mistaken for someone else, for starters. And uh, second of all, uh, like, you didn't answer the question. Like, I asked the lady who hosts the show, uh, you know, did you feature the song? You know, I think that, like, she feels very strongly about something and is communicating something. I'm simply running a show that I've been running for 12, 13 years. Uh, and, And she's an older, more experienced person who's like, you know, whatever. She's running a popular show right now. I'm not. Uh, Alan Averills is mentioning the War of the Roses before I do. Uh, I wrote a song about it a long time ago. He's not. I don't know. Are there too many? Is there anything else to really conclude or think about or add in or anything like that? Or uh, you know, it's a real question. You know, if so, drop those in the comment section below here, because that's where I will read those, and then respond to those, and then other people, I know you're discouraged and disheartened even though that's not a word, it's disheartened other people can comment as well unless of course you shoot me a direct message, in which case the conversation is simply between you and I uh, all these things really should be like taught in schools and, and maybe they are, and maybe they're not. Maybe you're freaking out. Maybe you're not freaking out. Maybe this is freaky. Maybe this is otherworldly. Maybe I would like to spend as much time talking about the, you know, filling this content with the way, the way that I want to. Maybe I will get my day. Maybe I, the day will shine when I can fill this content, have it be exactly how I need it to be. I don't know if that exists, but I know that it does exist. I know that it will fucking happen but it has nothing to do with god and so closing on out hail satan